Lake Shore Cafe with Catherine and Kyle Fisher, the owners of the Parkway and the Cerrito. You might say former, I still say current because, well, they created these doggone things, so you can get after me later. But they've given me the honor of, well, talking on video about what happened in, in both cases. So here we go. Hey, thanks a lot. Um, first of all, I'm going to say something right out. Kyle and Catherine, what happened? Uh, who wants to go first? <clears throat> what happened to the parkway? Yeah. Oh, God. Catherine, you want to do this? <laughs> parkway was going along fine. It's, it's hard to expand your business. And um, it's, it's hard, and it's also hard when some of the ways in which you're trying to expand, you can't always rely on all the players involved, and that's unfortunate. Well, let, let, me, take you, let me take you back a little ways. Um, in 2001, the Parkway was doing just, doing just fine, and we were approached by the city of El Cerrito. And they said, we love what you guys are doing with the Parkway. Could you please do this? Can you please do this in El Cerrito? We said, well, we don't have those kind of resources to do something like this in El Cerrito. We see what you have. It's beautiful. We love your town, but we can't do it. So they went away. They came back the next year and they asked us again. They said, would you guys be willing to develop this theater in El Cerrito? We said, again, we don't have the resources to do that. We can't afford it. So after a lot of a lot of back and forth between us and the city, they, they finally said, well, what if we pay for it? And they said, well, if you pay for it, we'll help you with it and we'll develop it and we'll see if we can create something new in El Cerrito. We, we were excited about the idea of having a public-private collaboration and um, we thought we thought this could be a good a good template for a lot of other communities to create a community center that would allow themselves to express themselves. There's, a, there's yeah, there's a lot of you know there's a lot of old theaters around in a lot of different cities and. Um, and there's a lot of cities that have kind of lost, their downtown isn't as vibrant as it once was. And this is a way of partnering with the city to raise that, build that community and get it up and going and preserving those historic elements. And that was it's really important to us and it seemed to be important to the city of El Cerrito as well. The problem with that is it required a great deal of Catherine and my time. And over the next five or six years, we put a lot of time into developing the Cerrito Theater. During that time, we didn't dedicate as much time to the parkway. The parkway continued to remain profitable, but between the drain on the, this parkway from our time not being there and the drain on the parkway from us having to expend money at the Cerrito Theater, it hurt the parkway. And um, we, <clears throat> and over, over time, that that foundation, the loss of that foundation, in addition to some of the representations made to us by the city of El Cerrito that didn't turn out to be correct. Well, what kind? Well, they had told us that they would, they wanted to see it happen and that they would help pay for it. And um, I think, and, and that didn't always, that happened for a long time and then at a certain point it didn't happen. And they said, don't worry, we'll get you money, we'll have it by this date. We used Parkway money to help keep the Cerrito going with the idea that the money from the city of El Cerrito would be coming and then it didn't. And at that point the Parkway was crippled um, and not able to sustain itself and I mean that's 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 what happened. When did the Parkway start going south? The Parkway the Parkway act actually never went south. The Parkway even to the day that it was closed was profitable. Oh. We got but at the time the Parkway was closing we had a choice. We knew that we couldn't sustain both theaters. And we were told by the city of El Cerrito that they would assist us with, the, with continuing on at the Cerrito if we remained, if we continued to work on it. At the same time, we were having a very difficult time with our landlord at the Parkway. Um, we had been negotiating our lease with him for three years. What's that guy's name? Yan um, Kit Chang. Thank you. So we had we had a choice. We said, okay, our, can we will we stay at the Parkway or will we stay at the Cerrito? Our choice would have been to stay at the Parkway because, of course, our love is the Parkway. Our love is the city of Oakland. We're Oaklanders. We're Oaklanders. Right, right, um, right. But the viability of the Cerrito seemed better only because we saw the prospect of the city helping us Plus financially. Plus the city is basically saying, we'll, we'll give you money. Yeah, they, exactly. Money, so yeah, yeah. They're saying they'll give us money. <laughs> so, I mean, if... But if, if they hadn't said that, and we, and we closed one theater, we could have closed the Cerrito and the Parkway would have survived. The Parkway would have actually been a lot, was at its base more solid than the Cerrito. It's, um, we had been doing this for 13 years. Right, you know, right. we knew it, you know, part of the, 
trouble too that Kyle alluded to is as we worked on the Cerrito, it meant time that we weren't working on building the base of the parkway. Mm -hmm. The idea was is that we would be able to come back to the parkway and make them both continue to grow. But when the city pulled the rug out from under us, that wasn't, we weren't able to do it. What uh, employees of the parkway have said to me, you said, well, why did it close so early the way that they did? They felt like they had the rug pulled out from under. And they did. Um, I completely screwed that up. Um, there's, there's no excuses for that. I misread a notice. Um, I misread a legal notice. I'm an attorney, and I misread a legal notice. We had, we had fully intended to give all of our employees at least a month's notice prior to our closing. I turned around and read a notice that I had read a month prior to that. I looked at the date, and the date was not the date that I remember. And we saw, I saw the sheriff coming to the parkway in the next few days, and I thought, uh-oh, this isn't good. And so that was completely, completely my screw-up. Um, and I've made more than one. Trust me on that. I've made more than one. <laughs> so we're... Uh Let's take us back. Tell people how you began to start the park where you don't know the story to begin with. I mean, because there's there are happy parts to this, you know. Even, yeah. oh, oh, there's there's nothing about the park except for its closure. Yeah. Everything about the parkway was wonderful. It was oh, so many happy things. We uh, we both love what we created in yeah. Oakland. Uh, it. The Parkway came about because we wanted to have a place to show movies and have pizza and beer and have a good time and bring different people together. And as the Parkway grew, we were able to tap into so many different communities. Um, and, and really that's what makes Oakland such a great place is that Oakland has all of these different communities and we were able to bring them together and create this forum where they could thrive and get to know each other and and just it, it would take off and new things would arise from the people coming together. So that was kind of the inception of the Parkway and it grew and so many things happened. The Parkway grew so far beyond us, beyond our staff. It became, it was, it was Oakland. It was an expression yeah. of Oakland, which I think it started with that damn John Russo sandwich. <laughs> it started, there was John's a great guy. Yeah, John's a, yeah, yeah. John, uh, talk about that because he played a role in helping you guys out, right? He was one of the um, he was one of our earliest supporters. Prior to us coming into the Parkway, the theater had had a checkered past, and the neighborhood didn't really want us. They were concerned that this business that we, we wouldn't be respectful of the community, and so John, being the good council member that he is, heard these rumors, came, called us up and said, "Hey, I want to meet with you guys. I want to find out." What What's going on? So I remember the first time I met him, he'd just come from a run around the lake, and he stopped in when we were working on stuff, and he t we talked, and he got to know us. He saw that we were really who we said we are. We try to be pretty straightforward about what we can and can't do, and um, so he just kind of, you know. He helped connect us with the people we should be talking to, helped facilitate things where he could. Um, and, you know, I, we said, what can we do? You're being so great. He said, name a sandwich after me. So he, he picked the eggplant sandwich. Because <laughs> yeah, actually back then we were, we were pretty young. And, sorry, and, we, and we had never worked in city in, with the government. And Oakland city government can be confusing, it can be daunting. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's nice to have somebody hold your hand when you're running up against bureaucrats saying no, 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 no. It sounds like you didn't have that in El Cerrito by contrast. You know? we, we actually- We thought we, we did. We thought we did. Really? We th really? I mean, th that was the thing. Actually working with the city of El Cerrito, they held our hand a lot. They said, we, they had a goal that they wanted. They wanted a, their theater restored. They wanted a community place. They wanted to put El Cerrito on the map because prior to that, really, it wasn't. And they wanted that and they knew we could provide that and they facilitated us providing that um, but they, I don't think they weren't always clear and straightforward with us about what they could and couldn't do and I mean that is the contrast between them and say John Russo who was pretty clear and upfront and um, didn't promise more than he could deliver sometimes John's brutally honest <laughs> yes but you know, you know Hold on a second. I said that joke. <laughs> but you can count on that, and I'd rather have someone be honest with me so I know where to stand as opposed to to not be honest right. and I invest in something that I end up getting stuck. We can we we can work with honest. You can you can you can survive or fail with honest because then you know what you know what to expect. You deal with it and you make the proper decisions for you. When somebody's telling you something that they're going to do something and they don't do it, there's not much you can do about that. You've invested in it and to your detriment. Uh, I think someone said that 
it was hard to do the part because it was basically a single screen theater, even though it was cut up. Is there still a market for what the parkway was? You said it was profitable. I guess the answer is yes, but it's it, there. There is a market for it. It's a very tight margin market. I I wish anybody luck who wants to do it. Um, it took us it took us five years to to learn the proper balance of cost um, and revenue and programming to, to property reflect the community in a way that would be to, to be profitable. But it's a labor of love. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not, you know, there's there's businesses that people do because they just want to make money. Right. And then there's businesses, lifestyle businesses that you do because you love what you're doing and that's, that's a major part of your compensation. That's what the parkway is. I mean, it's not like, you know, we're not off, oh, we're going to go spend a month in Rio. You know, forget it. I mean, we put all our money into it to make it, it continue to go and to thrive because building the community and creating something in Oakland is what's important to us. Well, it's almost like your second house. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, you spend time there and you take care of it. And you, yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah. Because quite frankly, Zinni, mm -hmm. if, if you weren't buying lunch, we wouldn't even be able to, be able to come here and do this with you. <laughs> Delighted. Thanks for lunch, by the way. <laughs> My pleasure. Great food at the Lake yeah, Shore Cafe. Yeah. It is great. Yeah, I ate the whole thing here. <laughs> what, I mean, um, what about the matter of going back to the Cerrito? Uh, well, what's next with the Cerrito? Because... Yeah, tell me, tell us what's next. They have they have a new operator. Um, City was able to move very quickly to get a new operator in, and um, it's the same people that own the Elmwood, which is a great neighborhood theater. We wish them well. They seem to be going after very diff a different uh, model than what we do. Hmm. It's you know your standard it's different your standard now. movie theater. Well, nine dollar no, no movie pizza, tickets. Right. No, it, it doesn't seem like they're going to do food and alcohol. No, actually, I, I, actually I that's not true. They, they they they're saying right now that eventually they want to end up doing exactly what we did. Oh. They, they aren't they aren't doing that now. They're changing they're changing the they're making it all ages all the time. They're changing the price of the, the um, admission. But they're saying as time goes on, they are going to roll out food. They're going to roll out. Um, beer and wine sales. Um, I wish them luck. Wish them luck. Yeah. But it seems to me like I'm just saying this from my own opinion that they're almost stealing your company. Yeah. yeah. That's how I. I mean, I, I, I. I'm. That's my opinion. I. You know, it just seems that way to me. Well, you, you know. if you look at when you sell a business, you sell your equipment and you sell your goodwill. What we have is, you know, we have equipment that, that is still stuck in the Cerrito Theater that we are not allowed to get, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all of our goodwill. They ever explain why? No. They just they just took it and locked it. Stuff from the Parkway, actually, that's still in, in the Cerrito that Wait, we stuff from get. the Parkway is at the Cerrito Theater in yeah. El Cerrito? Yeah. The stuff from the Oakland Parkway is in El Cerrito? Yeah. We can't that's weird. get to and, it. And, you know, they can't, you know, I don't feel like they've taken our business because they've taken our equipment. They, they, they may serve beer and wine and show movies, mm -hmm. but the Parkway was not about beer and wine and movies. It was what they don't get, well, I don't know if they're going to get. What made the Parkway successful was it was it transcended that, and it was about personalities and it was about community. A two-screen theater has a hard time surviving in any situation. It has to, it has to have a lot of different things unique. And one of the things I used to always tell to our staff is, somebody else could do on the outside what we do, but they're not who we are. And so we will see, they will create something. Whatever it is will not be us. And whatever something they make, I hope it benefits their community. But it will not be a speakeasy theater. What did you read on the Parkway and the Oakland Redevelopment Agency possibly well, stepping in now and uh, becoming heavily involved? Well, I mean, we're not privy to any of this. Um, so, but what opinion. we've... Well, what, what we've said to anyone who asks is, I mean, we love the Parkway neighborhood. We love that theater and the community. And if there's anything we can do to help, we would support anything happening. I know it's a it's a tough marriage between government, as we've proved in the Cer with the Cerrito. It's a tough marriage between government and private business that often it's a divorce. Um, and, you know, it would be great if they can pull it together. That theater is old and it needs a lot of work. A lot of work, and um, again, it's back to the labor of love. I mean, it needs somebody to put in money to make it happen, and you—it's not money you're going to get back out. It's money that you have to. It's—it's it's called investing in your community, and government typically does that. Sometimes, um, 
private individuals who have those resources are able to do it, but it's it's a tough balance. Yeah, it sounds like you guys need to be consultants around the country. Huh. Well, I'd love well, to do that. Well, yeah. we're, we're, we're not going to tell you the discussion we had prior to you getting here, Zinni, but we... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually working on something very much like that. Oh, um, you know, the difference... The Oakland Redevelopment Agency should hire you. <laughs> you know, that's you know, what... They we're, have we're our gonna, number. Hey, Gregory Hunter, you should hire these guys, you know. We seem, we seem to be personas non grata these days, so we're letting people... But um, we, are, we are considering... Over the years, a lot of people have asked us about our business concept and about what it takes to start a business and create a community center. And we're, we're Kathy and I are talking about having seminars and being consultants and, and things like that because we, we were what we were trying to create is a different kind of model. Um, we have enough Walgreens, we have enough, you know, base street cinemas all have their place and we're all lo we're losing the individuality of our communities which is unfortunate because when you live in a place like Oakland that there's no place on this planet like you want to be able to express that uniqueness to the to the greater community and, and everybody everybody's community should have some place like that to do something like that because we have something to offer each other now I get occasionally emails from this will guy and like, we know Will, okay. and he's involved in it uh, but you guys had a great relationship, I'm not going to talk about now, but I mean in the past, about the thrill and, and how did all that come about? With the, you know, was we doing the thrill build and all that? We had all worked um, at the Berkeley Faculty Club together, uh, oh. like 25 years ago. And so when at Kyle, Berkeley? At Cal? At Cal. Deep. Oh, I eat there all the time, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it, was, it was a good time. Um, and when we, prior to us opening the theater, we started a publishing company where we published Will's book. Oh. Love stories are too violent for me. And then the next year we opened the theater, and Will was very concerned that we wouldn't put um, continue our emphasis on the publishing company. And we created and suggested to him a venue. It was originally a midnight movie that he hosted um, with his first wife um, to kind of help his personality get going. And over the years, you know, then when midnight things got a little bit too. It, the audience wasn't coming very much. Um, we suggested moving it to Thursdays, and so that's when he Which created. Which I remember that. Yeah, yeah. when yeah. he created Thir Thrillville, mm -hmm. and um, and that's incidentally where he met his second wife. And um, so that's the key. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, city. Well, next time we have a theater, we'll create a, create a platform for you so you can meet your next missus. Yeah, cool. Um, well, yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> or, or in this case, that'll be my first one, not my next. Yeah, that's <laughs> good for you. So you guys had a family there, and now it's... it's you guys are still friends, all right? Not so much. Oh, that's... There, there, was, there, was, there was a lot of fallout with the... Um, with how the Cerrito went down, and we, we lost just yeah. we we lost our business. We lost some friends, and it's it's unfortunate. Well, where things are reparable, you know. I mean, you you never know. You know that, that's what I always say. You never. In this a town like this that's small. Somebody if they see it, my call and say, "Hey, I'm really sorry. You know, let's get together." For oh, a we're, we're we're very we're very sorry. I mean, there's nothing worse than having relationships suffer as a result of things like business. Yeah, yeah stuff like, it's, uh, is there anything you want to say to the Parkway employees, you know, and the El Cerrito employees, like a, you know, well, we have, they, they, they we're sorry we couldn't, you by? <laughs> we're sorry we couldn't keep it going. I'm, I know we didn't do everything um, the best we could have, and we apologize for any inconvenience we caused you in your life and any difficulty we caused you in your life. We've tried very hard for everybody. We've tried very hard to find our former employees' jobs. Um, we've been working behind the scenes to call up people and s arrange situations, looking on Craigslist, referring them to other situations. But it it, it hurts to lose your job, and we know that. It, it, it's I mean, it's hard. We wish it hadn't been so sudden. We wish that um, it hadn't ended in such a kind of financial difficulty where it would have been nice to have been able to give everyone a severance. And unfortunately, you know, we're sunk financially. There's no, you know, there's no money any place. Um, and it's hard because I know in this economy, everyone's feeling it. This is your platform. Anything else you want to add? Or? We hey. love Oakland. Yeah. Thanks, Eddie. Appreciate you hearing us out. Oh, hey, like I said, I'm, I'm honored you gave, gave me the time. And Just, thanks for yeah. lunch. My pleasure. <laughs> Anytime. Yeah. Come to the Lakeshore Cafe. And order the uh, the Lake Merritt omelet. It's great. Or the Reuben. Or the Reuben. Or the Reuben. Or the Reuben. Yeah, cool. All right. Thanks. <laughs>